Hi. Hi, Govert. Nice seeing you. Good Can afternoon. You see him? Okay, that's fine. So it's Good very... afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, first, I would like to thank the Estonian government to, to invite us uh, uh, at the Tallinn Digital Summit. And I welcome you to, to... I would like first to contextualize our discussion. We have 15 minutes, so I will be very short. You know, uh, our conversation today seeks to ask how can the Blue Dot Network catalyze smart connectivity and, and trusted investment. And uh, this morning, our OECD Secretary General, he explained to you uh, what was the Blue Dot Network and how it could increase private sector investment to close the global infrastructure gap. Um, the Blue Dot Network aims at doing so by, by uh, certifying projects against environmental, social, governance and financial standards and the objective is first to put sustainability at the center of uh, the design phase but also the implementation phase of the projects and also to signal to the financial markets and the financial players that the ESG risk have been managed and taken on board seriously. So um, the OECD as you may know is providing technical support to this Blue Dot Network initiative what we do is like we are uh, developing the different elements of the certification framework and putting uh, for the funding members of this initiative some options for the review mechanisms. And also we have put together a stakeholder group uh, comprising a lot of high-level uh, business people, but also academics, uh, civil society organizations, etc., to provide us with strategic inputs on the Blue Dot Network framework and to give us their views on what, how it should be and how to build it up so that it's practical, so that it's efficient and also legitimate. So I would like to introduce you um, Mr. Govert Van Hoort. He's the managing director of the Van Hoort Dredging and marine construction, trans contractors, sorry. <laughs> and I would like to ask you a question. You're part of this, you know, stakeholder group who advises us on the, 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 the building up of this uh, certification framework. So I would like to get your views on this framework and in particular, how do you think this Blue Dot Network and its certification process could support business in improving the sustainability of your infrastructure investments? And what should be you know, the main features of this framework to allow it to be efficient, practical, etc.? So you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Um, as said, Govert van Oort, besides being the managing director of our dredging and marine construction business, I am also a fifth generation family member in our uh, 150 year old family business and I think that long history uh, says many things about we, how we look at the future. Yeah. Our company is globally active in providing marine solutions. We execute about 180 projects in, in about 40 countries every year with about 5,000 employees of more than 70 nationalities and a fleet of modern equipment. Uh, so we see lots of different types of standards and governance worldwide every year. We are active in developing, installing wind farms, creating new land and harbors, maintaining waterways, safeguarding existing land against the effects of climate change and developing coastal areas to facilitate the livelihood of local communities. Now, our mission is to create a better world for future generations by delivering marine ingenuity. And for us, with this long-term vision, this means being a front runner in the transformation towards sustainable infrastructure development. And working on the global market implies for us that it is crucially important that governments and large international clients facilitate a level playing field. A level playing field for all contractors on all relevant standards, environmental, social, health, human rights, labor, diversity, Etc. Now, uh, on 
environmental and social aspects, we strongly believe that the Nord must help to create a better world for future generations. It really feels as our obligation to leave this world in a better shape than it is today. And this is not a hollow statement for us. Uh, the Nord is he investing heavily in new green vessels, new business models to build with nature, reduce CO2 emissions and improve marine life and ocean health. And a standardized set of requirements for contractors on environmental, social and financial topics where contractors should comply with is a must for the Nord to see and to achieve a level playing field. And the same rules and regulations for each contractor should lead to competition, not only on price, but increasingly as time goes by, more on topics as sustainability and social responsibility. And the blue, dead, blue dot network work, works both ways. A uniform set of standards and certificates that governments should comply helps Venor to be sure that projects comply to our principles and also avoid possible negative image and other risks. And that is a benefit for both the contractor, but ultimately the client and ultimately society. Lastly, I think we need to reward companies that are leading the change to sustainable infrastructure. There is really significant upfront cost and too often procurement procedures, in many cases currently mandatory by law, are focused on lowest monetary cost only. So I think that is setting a little bit out how we see our role and how we see the blue dot network being able to add value to, to the things we do. Thank you, thank you. It's very interesting uh, what you just said. And uh, as you know, it's the objective if, uh, is of course to level the playing field, as you mentioned, but also to somehow detonate a race to the top uh, through looking at all the 10 elements of the Blue Dot Network and not only the price, as you say, it's, uh, as it's classical in procurement processes. So that's quite uh, uh, very interesting what you are telling us. And now I have a question regarding more like the emerging risks that you're seeing. And how do you think the Blue Dot Network uh, framework could help countries in this region to, to overcome these emerging risks? Because you are one of the big investors in this region. So I would like to get your views on that. Yes, I think um, when you're an, an investor, uh, being able to rely on a standard uh, that sets clear criteria for infrastructure projects independent of a country or region. And it should not matter whether it's the US, Australia, Central or Eastern Europe, uh, independent of country or region, uh, then they will be much more inclined to invest in a project because the relative risk is a much more transparent and can be properly assessed. Uh, it will bring higher visibility and it will take also less time to appraise a project and, and get the internal approvals. So it will, be, it will make investing and lending in countries like Estonia or any other country a lot easier and ultimately faster and cheaper. Um, uh, in order for a certification framework to be of value, what is really important is that the essence, in essence, the framework is widely accepted in the financial world and it is aligned with other going principles, for example, equator principles, the taxonomy and other international standards. So that you actually come to a standard that would be a guideline, not only for OECD members, but actually it becomes a standard that is so universally, worldwide adopted that it will basically be uh, a guiding principle or even a mandatory standard also for non-OECD members. So, for example, Estonia has a big potential for offshore wind and offshore wind developments require a sizable investment. And uh, the main reason why we were in the top investors in Estonia was because last year we made a sizable equity investment in a potential windmill park offshore in the coming years. And a blue dot network certification would support attracting larger investors to the area. You have a guarantee that although you do not know the country, its culture and its principles, there is a standard that will be adhered to and there is transparency in the way things are done. It, and the same holds for ports, land reclamation for tourism development and coastal protection. You know, uh, there are really no limits 
when it comes to investments in whatever industry, uh, once you have these standards. Now, when you think about risk, eh, examples of risks that investors and developers might run into in these areas, less developed regulation or very often lack of enforcement of the local ESG regulations, um, comprehensive set of guidelines will set a minimum standard and it provides investors and developers with visibility which will, low, which will in, in the end lead to a lower risk premium and lower cost. Blue Dot Network can provide minimum standards, for example, on safety and labor. And once more, if competition is all facing the same set of standards, then ultimately the company that adds most value to society will surface in projects. Also, clear Blue Dot standards will help in getting insurers and export credit agencies on board. And often these parties are essential in getting the funding in place for large infrastructure projects. Thank you very much. I think uh, what you said is against like putting the, the, the focus on how to reward good, responsible, sustainable investment. And that's really the ambition of the Blue Dot Network. Uh, to, to support this race to the bottom, as I was saying. And, uh, and uh, it's very important to get your, your, the view from the private sector to, to, to frame the, the process. And you mentioned all the existing standards, the equator principles, etc. And what we are currently doing at the OECD is really to do, to map for all the 10 elements of the Blue Dot net Network, map all the existing standards, and then set a criteria looking at the metrics that are existing, the data that could support these metrics, etc. So the idea is not to reinvent the wheel <laughs> on all the different aspects, but kind of mapping everything that exists and, and put together a, a, a simple enough, I mean, workable, practical uh, reference point. And then what we are discussing with, with uh, our, our, our stakeholders and the funding members of this initiative who are, as you know, US, Australia and Japan, is how to organize the, the, the certification process itself. So there are a couple of mm. options and uh, they would need to choose uh, among these options. And also we are currently designing the review process, how based on this framework we'll, we'll design the re review process and who would do it, etc. So uh, we are very happy at the OECD to, to, to provide technical support. Uh, the three funding members, as you know, uh, the US, uh, Australia, and, and Japan are, are finalizing these, their discussions to, to put on the table and convince the other countries to go align, uh, to align with them, uh, with this, uh, this, uh, this uh, initiative. Uh, of course, at the OECD, we have a lot of... Uh, Standard, existing standards that will be part of the standards that we are currently mapping. And we, we, we are also doing a lot of work to somehow um, allow the financial system to really uh, be able to distinguish between the different projects. And to do that, we, 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 we have not only guidance to help uh, implement our OECD standards, like, for example, we have due diligence guidance for the financial sector, including due diligence guidance for the institutional investors on, on, uh, on uh, credit operations or on underwriting operations, on project finance, etc. Uh, we also have guidance on our anti-bribery standard, the anti-bribery convention, etc. But now we are working at a more, like, I would say, holistic uh, level with the financial sector to ensure that all that is currently developing in terms of sustainable finance is, uh, is getting real in a sense that, you know, we need a lot of, uh, we need to work a lot on, on, on the, the, the methodologies, the ra ratings, etc., uh, to make sure that everything is, is uh, comparable, is, op you know, operationable, if I may say so. And also we are working, of course, on the regulatory aspects of it so that this ESG disclosure would be not only uh, uh, mandated but auditable, etc. So there are a lot of work to do. There are uh, uh, somehow a complex ecosystem around this sustainable finance these days with a lot of initiatives. The OECD is part or is participating in many of these initiatives and we are doing our work uh, with our committees on financial markets, etc. But uh, most of all, I mean, we, we want to equip the financial system with, with, with what is needed in terms of 
ratings in terms of regulations so that to ensure that mainstream finance go into these sustainable projects. And the BDN initiative will be part of this overall uh, ecosystem to try to detonate this race to the top. So we are very happy to contribute to that. And, and uh, thank you very much for giving us your, uh, your view from the private sector, how this could be useful to, to ensure this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.